briefly share some insights about kind of what's going on in the world of Visalis. Um, before I get into all of that, since it has been a while since I've been up here, and I know there's a lot of people who I haven't met, I look forward to uh, meeting all of you guys um, through the course here by Salus Journey, building a relationship as you move your way up to the top of the promoting plan there. Um, but for those of you guys who don't know my background, I, I obviously, like I said, I didn't grow up anywhere near here. I grew up in Southern California. Who's been out to Southern California? That's a lot of and I uh, grew up out there, very, uh, very average upbringing. Matter of fact, a lot of people, when they meet myself, Nick and Ryan, right, those three co-founders of the company were all relatively young, and they look at the results that Vaisalis has generated in what appears to be a short amount of time. People assume we all came from some business background or business pedigree. Um, just so I can see who's in the room here, how many of you, prior to getting involved in Vaisalis, were already entrepreneurs, you were self-employed, you were business owners. Okay. How many of you, is this your first leap into that realm of entrepreneurship? Wow. You guys give these people a big round of applause. That's the majority of them. For those of you guys that just raised your hand, my story's probably more like yours. If you were to consider, you know, growing up in an entrepreneurial environment, I would have grown up in the environment completely on the other side of the spectrum. Ultra-conservative, very strict, by the book. Matter of fact, my mom is a principal, my dad was a cop. <laughs> Not meant to be a joke, but you can laugh at my pain, I appreciate that. Uh, so when I say by the book, I mean by... Brian still makes fun of me. He goes, Blake, when you were a bad kid, did your mom give you F's and your dad give you tickets? You know, I was like... <laughs> Laugh at my expense again, I appreciate it. So, when I say by the book, I mean by the book, and, and I was taught from a very young age that in order to be successful, because I wanted to be successful, how many of you guys, when you were growing up, you wanted to be successful, right? I think, I think most of us, right, from a young age, we, we don't want to grow up and be not successful, that's not an aspiration or a goal, right? We want to grow up and be what? Successful. successful. And I remember following everything that I was taught growing up, and for me, at a young age, success meant I had to be smart. It meant the grades that I brought home to the family. Any of you guys grew up in an environment where grades and how you did in school was really stressed or really important, right? And I followed that to an absolute T, an absolute T, right? I mean, I can still walk into my elementary school and see my name on a plaque as the outstanding sixth grader. I can still walk into my high school and see my name on a plaque as a student body president. I graduated there with a 4.2 GPA. I went to a top six university down there in the States. I got degrees in political science, with an emphasis in public law and a minor in psychology. I did all of that in a total of three years Latin honors. Wow. Yeah. You say wow, I say why? <laughs> And I say that half jokingly, but half serious, because I, I remember the first time I asked myself that question of why. I was 19 years old, and I saw myself going through the overachiever, right, doing all of this, building the resume. And I said, why am I doing all of this? And that question was a turning point in my own life, because the only answer that I could give myself at that time is I was doing all of that because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Yep. You know, it's interesting. At this stage of my life, I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of people all over North America. Right? A lot of you guys know, just in the next couple weeks, I'll be in 25 different cities myself, 72 counting my partners, going all over the place. And I meet a lot of people, and I, I can agree that not many people can grow up in that strict of an environment. They don't relate to maybe everything that I did, but a lot of people do relate to their still today, waking up, going through their days, doing things because they think that's what they're supposed to do. It's not what they want to do. It's not that they wake up every day and they're passionate about life after hitting snooze 18 times on the alarm clock. <laughs> it's not that they're going to bed every night fulfilled saying, you know what, this is what I was put on this planet to do. This is what I was meant to do. A lot of people get stuck in motions and stuck in routines because they feel that's what they're supposed to do. I came up with a personal philosophy that when you stop doing what you think you're supposed to do and you start doing what you were really meant to do, that's when the script ends and that's when life really begins. I guess I was just very fortunate to be put in an environment at a relatively young age to start thinking like that. Got put in an environment similar to what you guys are in right now with Vaisal. 
all of a sudden I saw that there was another way, that entrepreneurship was really the vehicle, that if you put yourself in the right environment, anything is possible. Parents in the room, how many of you would agree that you become like those you surround yourself with? Fact? You guys, and ultimately that led to a successful tenure as a promoter within the direct selling industry, and for those of you guys that have heard the full Vaisalis story, led to the creation of Vaisalis. March, that'll be eight years ago, coming up on our eight-year birthday in March. So I guess I can stand in front of you guys saying that I'm one of three people that has been with this company since it was an idea. Wow. How many of you have ever had a good idea before? How many of you have ever, have ever taken a shower before? <laughs> Half of you didn't raise your hands, that scares me. Um, we all have good ideas, but to be able to watch an idea become reality, and then go beyond reality and really become a movement, which is what I feel we're a part of today, has been an exciting and very humbling thing. And you guys, I'm here to talk to you guys today about what that idea has become, give you a little bit pers of perspective. What's the word? Perspective. perspective. Of what you're a part of. How many of you in the room have been with Vaisalis for less than six months by a show of hands? Wow. Yeah. wow. How many of you have been with us less than a year? Yeah, look around the room. Raise your hand if you've been with us for more than a year. Wow. Awesome. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So we got a lot of people from a broad range in the room here today. Because I'm going to share with you some numbers, some perspective, for a couple of different reasons. Number one is these are great numbers to write down because I believe documentation beats conversation any day of the week. It's also good for you to have that perspective so you know what you're a part of and what you're coming into as a promoter, whether it's six months ago, 12 months ago, or you got dragged down here this morning and you're still trying to figure out what all this is about, okay? 